to part two of this review of the children's book Flamingo Boy by Michael Morpurgo. So regarding the portrayal of autism, there were both good and not so good aspects to the portrayal in the book. Firstly, um, the good representation, what I liked about the representation of autism in this book. It was good to see an autistic character who feels deeply, because so often in fiction, autistic characters are portrayed as kind of feelingless, cold automatons, without any feelings. Um, whereas this character, Lorenzo, um, was deeply moved by suffering, both human and animal, and felt intensely. So that was kind of quite a good counter, if you like, um, counter-representation. However, on the downside, the book could be in danger of reinforcing a stereotypical disability trope. Namely, the idea that disabled people, and autistics in particular, have special abilities or superpowers. In Lorenzo's case, this superpower is his affinity with animals, as betrayed in the quote from the book. He put his hands on them, breathes on them, and they get better. So he, he's kind of, yeah, he's betrayed as sort of like an animal whisperer with his magical ability to, to heal animals. Um, this, representa this representation of an autistic with a magical gift could be concerning if people read the book without much knowledge of autism and then assume that all autistics are special in some extra human way. This representation offers autism by making it seem otherworldly and mysterious and this representation has occurred so many times already in fiction that its repetition or iteration in Flamingo Boy had me feeling rather uncomfortable. I mean, um, they could have simply betrayed, Morpurgo could have simply betrayed Lorenzo as, you know, this, uh, as an autistic with an intense passion and intense interest in animals, flamingos in particular, hence the reason why he's called Flamingo Boy, because that's how he comes to be known by the community around him, because of his intense love for flamingos. Um, but without having to layer it, without having to add this um, rather... Um, uh, I felt, in a, in a sense, it kind of detracted from the story, like it wasn't quite necessary for for Lorenzo to be portrayed as having a superhuman ability to cure animals, um, you know, to have him offered in that way. This happens not just with autism, not just with um, um, disability, but in actual fact, other minority groups have also been historically offered in this way. Um, I think African Americans, um, in particular, were often betrayed in fiction as having kind of like magical, sort of mysterious qualities to them. So it happens with, with many, with many different types of, um, you know, difference. Um, Sorry, I'm getting really distracted. There is a noise up there, so sorry if I'm like not coming across as very coherent. I'm not like, finding it quite hard to concentrate at the moment, so bear with me. Um, now, obviously, Lorenzo has a different type of autism to the one I have. I mean, he has very limited speech and displays very obviously different behaviour. Um, so, you know, he's kind of, he, I guess, in the past they would have called him, you know, he would have been described as having like classic autism with associated learning disabilities. But like me, he hates change, needs this routine, and has intense passions, or special interests, as they're often known. So I've, so I've just mentioned, you know, one of the concerning aspects about, you know, um, that he is given this special ability, this sort of superpower, this special gift, which is a kind of, um, you know, can lead to sort of harmful stereotypes being made about autism, particularly as it's been done so often in literature already, which I didn't, so I didn't think that that aspect was quite necessary in this book. Um, but on a positive side, I like the fact that the book shows how autism is not a tragedy and you can be a happy autistic as long as those who care about you accommodate your needs. So Lorenzo's family do not force him to change who he is in order to please society and Lorenzo lives a very happy existence on the farm with his animals, but at least that is until the war breaks out when everything changes around him and then, you know, part of the book is, shows how he deals with that. Um, One of the main themes of the book is friendship and trust and finding friends in the least expected places. For example, from a German soldier in World War II or from an autistic boy who saves your life out of the remote marshes of the Camargue and the lifelong friendship between two outsiders, a Roma gypsy girl, Kezia, and an autistic boy, Lorenzo. An interesting subplot in the book is the fact that Vincent is in a Camargue in the first place because he is following in the footsteps of another Vincent, Vincent van Gogh, in order to see the place 
where Goff painted fishing boats on the beach. One of the boats Goff painted was entitled Amity, which means friendship. Goff was searching all his life for a friend in vain, which is very moving, particularly considering my own lifelong difficulties connecting with others. So to conclude this review, I did quite enjoy this book, although not as much as I enjoyed when Marnie was there. I thought the book got better towards the end, when several themes were tied more closely together as the narrative came full circle. As Vincent says, I like full circles, and I share this, his sentiment. Completion and order feels good. I recommend this book if you are interested in autistic representation in fiction. And um, I hope I've, um, you know, shown um, some of the, the pros and cons of this particular representation. I do, I did feel it romanticised autism a bit, maybe sanitised it a little bit. Um, you know, kind of may, you know, the danger, as I said, and I'll say it again, of betraying autistics as having special abilities that kind of, um, you know makes it, you know, particularly, you know, this idea that autistics have a special affinity with animals and, you know, like animal whispering and this kind of almost mystical sort of um, rather uncanny ability to foretell future ominous events as Lorenzo seems able to do. You know, Lorenzo also seems to have a rather uncanny ability with numbers. I can just magically count how many flamingos are flying in the air. That's a well-worn stereotype. So that sat very uncomfortably with me because, of course, most autistics are not like that. Yes, it's true. There are autistics who have these abilities. They do exist. All stereotypes contain grains of truth. So autistic special abilities do exist. You know, often, like, you have, like, savants and things like that. They do exist. But most autistic people do not have these special abilities. Um, it's only a minority of autistic people, so I really hope people don't read this book and then like just come to the conclusion and assume that, oh, if you're autistic, you must be really good at animals and really able to empathise with animals and have this really uh, real amazing magical ability to get into contact with other people's feelings. It's almost like, in order to show that autistics um, are not... Um, by, you know, it's almost, almost so to show that autistics are not cold automatons. Well, Pergo's kind of gone the other extreme and, like, shown his autistic with these amazingly empathic, intuitive abilities to understand the feelings of humans and animals. So you've gone from one extreme to the other extreme. And most autistics are, are, not, are not at either extreme, actually. So I just wish there was some kind of, like, more balanced portrayal of autism, you know. Um, and so that was a little bit... Uh, that was on the downside, but like I said, I, or, uh, like I said, it also contained a positive that at least he was shown as having feelings. He was shown to be happy. Autism was not shown to be a tragedy, um, and that was that, that had thumbs up from me. Um, so yeah, so if you're interested in autistic representation, do go and read this book. And also, if you just want to have a light read with good morals and a well tied together ending. So there concludes my review of Michael Morpurgo's Flamingo Boy. Okay, now just before I finish. Um, I went I went out today with my support worker and I've just come back. We went to Home Sense, which is one of my favourite stores because they always change, um, well, they always contain lots of quirky items there. It's, so every time you go, there's something different, which is what I like because you never quite know what you're going to find. Um, this is where, like, like normally, yeah, like, I really hate change and everything, but this is one of the few occasions um, when, actually, I do like it because, like, you never quite know what you're going to find, and that's really interesting. You're like, ooh, you, particularly when you find stuff you like. And, yeah, so Home Sense is one of my favourite stores. So I came back from Home Sense, and I found this book there, which I can't wait to uh, get into. It's called Breakfast Love, Perfect Little Bowls of Quick, Healthy Breakfast. And what I love about it is it's so pictorial you've got all these pictures here of like different um breakfast bowls so here we've got coconut papaya quinoa and peanuts we've got apple orange porridge and chia seeds for example we've got banana grapefruit wide bread and shoe yogurt just endless basically endless bowls of inspiration it's just absolutely amazing this book so i'm really pleased i got that one and also while i was there i came away with this Dandy chai blend, roasted dandelion root with natural chai spices, which I'm really looking forward to try, containing roasted dandelion root, roasted chicory root, cinnamon, star anise, cardamom, ginger, nutmeg and cloves. So I'm looking forward to having that 
in the evening as well. So I just wanted to show you that. I also got this really cool book recently, also from Homestead. So I'm not going to show you that in this video, but in a future video, I really want to show you it. It's called a Bikini Body, and it's like this really big book, and it contains like loads and loads of meal plans, and it's really pictorial. So at some point, I'll show you that book, because I'm hoping to work my way through all the recipes in time. Okay, so I really am going to finish now. Um, I hope you have a good week, and I very much look forward to speaking to you next Wednesday. So thank you for watching.